Trying to do one that we're not going to sing. <laughs> we have five joined us already. Great.
Tuesday. Okay. You all set, Georgia? Yeah, I'm all set. Great. Yeah, bad. You got it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In the voice of creation, in the Psalms of David, in the words of the prophets, in the message of the angels, in the dream of Joseph, in the songs of Mary, in the proclamation of the shepherds, your promise is spoken, eternal God. And in the fullness of time, it took form and flesh in the baby Jesus. Come now, in this holy night of remembrance and expectation, as we gather to hear the voices of your faithful servants of every age speak of that word as the welcome advent of our redemption through your grace. And as we wait and watch with meditations and carols, may your word incarnate be renewed as the light in our hearts the inspiration in our minds, and the fuel of our good works every day of this joyous season and the new year. We ask this through him, whose coming is and will yet be, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So I welcome you this morning. Thank you for coming and joining in. Uh, it's always great to get together and hear some thoughts on Christmas from various people, hear from God's word about the birth of our Savior, and then sing some familiar carols together. So uh, do so with good Lutheran gusto. <clears throat> Since Adam by William H. Auden. He was an English poet, a playwright, a critic, a librettist. Winston Hugh Auden exerted a major influence on the poetry of the 20th century. Auden won the Pulitzer Prize in 1948 for the Age of Anxiety. Much of his poetry is concerned with moral issues and evidences a, long, a strong political, social, and psychological context. Since Adam, being free to choose, chose to imagine he was free to choose his own necessity, lost his freedom, man pursues the shadow of his image. Today, the unknown seeks the known. What I am willing to ask, your own will has to answer, child. It lies within your power of choosing to conceive the child who conceives you.
birth of the Messiah, according to the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the guest room. Christmas Eve by Christina Rosette. Christmas hath darkness brighter than the blazing noon. Christmas hath chillness warmer than the heat of June. Christmas hath a beauty lovelier than the world can show. For Christmas bringeth Jesus, brought for us so low. Earth, strike up your music. Birds that sing and bells that ring, heaven hath answering music for all angels soon to sing. Earth, put on your whitest bridal robe of spotless snow, for Christmas bringeth Jesus, who brought for us so low. So I know the next carol is not one that's familiar to you, but it's, uh, I think it's really beautiful, so that's what we're singing.
the Annunciation to the Shepherds, according to the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born today in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this word that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. The shepherd. Theodosia Garrison, this is Frederick Fox, worked on the staff of Life magazine, helped to organize the 250th anniversary of the city of Newark, New Jersey. She was also born there and resided in New Jersey. And she made the who's who list in 1914. There are in paradise souls neither great nor wise, yet souls who wear no less the crown of faithfulness. My master bade me watch the flock by night. My duty was to stay. I do not know what thing my comrade saw in that great light. I did not heed the words that bade them go. I know not where they were they maddened or afraid. I only know I stayed. The hillside seemed on fire. I felt the sweep of wings above my head. I ran to see if any danger threatened these my sheep. What though I found them folded jet quietly? What though my brother wept and plucked my sleeve? For they were not mine to leave. Thieves in the wood and wolves on the hill, my duty was to stay. Strange though it be, I had no thought to hold my mates. No will to bid them wait and keep the watch with me. I had not heard that summons they obeyed. I only know I stayed. Perchance they will return upon the dawn with word of Bethlehem and why they went. I only know that watching here alone, I know a strange content. I have not failed that trust laid upon me. I ask no more. I stayed.
Three Kings by Keely Willen. He's a prolific composer, organist, teacher, and this text is part of a choral piece that he wrote. Who knocks tonight so late, so late, the weary porter said. Three kings stood at the gate, each with a crown on head. The serving man bowed down. The inn was full, he knew. Said he, in all this town is no fit place for you. A light the manger lit. There lay the mother meek. Said they, this place is fit. Here is the rest we seek. They loosed their latchet strings, so stood they all unshot. Come in, come in, ye kings, ye kings, ye kings. And kissed the feet of God. Confess our faith together with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that we have seen and not seen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God has not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was crowned with the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again from the Lord of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. In this kingdom, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We have 
acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, you are the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Father, as we gather this morning to celebrate the birth of your Son, we ask you to hear our prayers for our world and every need within it. For Bishop Eggensteiner, Pastor Chris, Becky, and all bishops, pastors, deacons, and music directors who have led us joyfully in celebrations commemorating the birth of your Son, we offer our gratitude and a wish for some peace, solace, and rest during this Christmas season. Lord of mercy, hear our prayer. So many symbols of Christmas, everything from the star that led the shepherds to the trees that adorn our homes, come from the universe you created. Help us to be more mindful that this world is not ours to keep and use as we see fit, but rather a gift to be cherished, used wisely, and passed on to the next generation. Lord of mercy, as we celebrate a joyous birth, let us pray for those who struggle with infertility to start or grow their families. We ask you to grant them strength and patience. In modern times, we refer to Jesus, Mary, and Joseph as a blended family. Let us play, pray for blended families, many of whom struggle to create new memories and new traditions at this Christmas time. We also pray for families that cannot be together this Christmas because of death, illness, distance, or struggles known only, only to them. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We look with gratitude upon scientists, the unsung heroes of our everyday lives. Their perseverance has not only allowed us to gather here today, but has given so many the gift of life. Lord of mercy, we ask you to watch over those for whom today is not a day of rest, but a day of work. Not just hospital workers and first responders, but airline employees, TSA, TSA agents, bus drivers, truckers, and truck stop workers, and all others who toil so we may gather. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We ask your prayers for those for whom this holiday season is not so joyous, whether it be physical or mental illness. Grant them strength and healing, and when that is not possible, help them to turn to you for peace and acceptance. Let us pause to remember those on our prayer list, those who we bring to you in prayer, and those whose needs are known to you alone. Merciful God, Amen. last but not least, we let us take a moment to pray for our own needs. Grant us the gift of refreshment, renewal, and purpose as we look back on another calendar year and look ahead to all the possibilities that the new year ahead can hold. Merciful God, Amen. It is into your hands, O oh Lord, that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you all. Amen. Let us share a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace.
Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, joining those people long ago who brought their gifts to your infant son, we now bring our gifts of praise, adoration, and thanks. Receive them as a response to the abundant blessings you provide us every day. We pray that you are pleased with our offerings and that you will use them to accomplish your holy will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and responsible that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus the Christ, who was born in a manger in a shepherd's town, but took his throne in the holy city of God's kings to overcome death and the grave on the cross. Because Jesus is born with our birth, we take hope in our rebirth through his resurrection. And so, in great joy this day, we now join our voices with those of the angels who sang over the fields on that blessed night. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come, love, door, and me, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. So now we come to find the glory of your presence among us here in the singing of the carols, in the hearing of your word, in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the wine, in answering your invitation to join in the fellowship of all those whom you gather at this your great feast. And so, even in the midst of this most holy of seasons, this season which blesses us with great joy and deep peace, we recall another season, a night in which this child of heaven 
was not handed over to empower the world with life, but handed over to the powers of the world to die. A death, though, that destined him and each of us for a second birth. And so we call to your remembrance this day the promises spoken by your Son, our Savior, when on that night he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying to them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for my remembrance. Then, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for my remembrance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Remember as you come forward to uh, grab an empty glass and uh, you can use both sides of the rail. Just because you're on that side, you don't have to use this side. So. Body of Christ given for you, Leslie. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Lord, we testify that there is no greater gift than the revelation of the glory of your love for us through your Son, who came into the world so long ago in a manger, and who has come to us again and again this night in word and sacrament. Filled with the spirit and the blessing of this night, send us out to proclaim the glad tidings of our great joy in all that we say and do. For in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You can be seated for the next carol. It's got seven verses. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not eleven. No, that's seven. Seven above two hundred like promise. We'll be singing that tomorrow for us. One of the distributions. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.